Many ancient sites found scattered all over the planet share an enigmatic feature. A pattern of scarring left upon their megalithic blocks and often upon their walls, once left by a technology built by an as yet not understood civilization. We've previously covered the perplexing technique often used by ancient wall builds, found all around the world in the form of mysterious metal clamps. Used to seat huge stone blocks as they settled over the following years, these clamps dated to similar times within antiquity and varying in style from continent to continent somehow turned up all over the world at around the same time, strongly suggesting some form of intercontinental travel and thus sharing of technologies. Furthermore, and perhaps more intriguing, are the links that we, here on the channel, along with others in alternative research, and even funded institutes from nations around the world, have begun to notice, and hopefully triangulate, a signature left by this once highly advanced group of individuals. The most noticeable of these sites, and the one which initially started us upon this journey, was Long Yu Cave in China. A cave system hewn from solid bedrock, leaving no waste piles of stone anywhere marking the stone with a telltale scar pattern. These parallel marks are not just found at Longyu. Similar yet not identical marks have also been found elsewhere on Earth. A slight variation in style is what one would expect with shared knowledge. As with the metal clamps, a slight variation can be found from continent to continent. These similar marks can also be found at the ancient quarry of Yangshan, China, and Petra in Jordan. Both argued for years to actually be the workmanship of a civilization far older than any noted within modern academia. These marks were then discovered to be upon the ceiling of Cave 1 at the ancient site of Mamalapuram within India, another site which in places shows levels of erosion far in excess of that which should be seen at a site dated within known history. Yet perhaps the most impressive of these marks, and most probably the ones made by the conceptual machine of origin, are the scars witnessed and now subsequently catalogued at Baalbek. These are far too large for any hand tool, made into solid granite with such precision. These also display circular motions, as if left by a modern-day tunnel boring machine. This evidence, undoubtedly unnoticed upon many more ancient sites, is clearly compelling evidence to support our channel's hypothesis that a mysterious history once occurred here on our planet, and will hopefully shed some light on the amazing people responsible for this phase of our past. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. There are a number of artifacts, which can still be found all over the Earth, that are extremely hard for modern academia to explain, using their popularly attested and often regurgitated views regarding chronological timelines of the developments of man. Most of these surviving objects are locked away within the collections of wily individuals, people aware of the many other such artifacts which have been found, stolen, and never seen again. These guardians of the artifacts have often encountered attempted robberies, switch tactics, and often offered large sums of money to allow these artifacts to just simply vanish. Yet fortunately, many still cling to existence thanks to a handful of individuals guided by a moral duty to share them with the world. And our next artifact could be seen as such an object. Known as the Dashka Stone, it is a controversial artifact that it is believed by some to be the guidelines used by the quote, architect of the world. Also known as the map of the creator, the Dashka Stone tablet has baffled researchers since its discovery in 1999, and as impossible as it may seem, a number of specialist Russian experts after in-depth analysis of the stone have concluded that it is indeed a stone map that is as much as 120 million years old. Created from a bird's eye view, presumably from space, the Dashka slabs depicts in detail the peaks and valleys of the Ural Mountains. Although mainstream academia will simply deny the possibility of the Dashka's true purpose and indeed age, many who have researched, mapped, and analyzed the slab have concluded that it is indeed somehow authentic and well over 100 million years old. Initially discovered by archaeologists from the Bashkir State University, it was actually found within the Ural Mountains of eastern Russia. Researchers were understandably stunned when they realized that the tablet displayed a highly accurate topographical map of Bashkiria, 
a specific area of the Ural Mountains at a scale of approximately 1 inch to 1 kilometer. The map of the creator also retains clues to its artificial origins within its structure, comprised of three layers, each of which strongly suggesting to geologists that it did not originate in nature, but was indeed artificially created deep within antiquity. The first layer is roughly 7 inches of a primitive cement ceramic compound. The second layer is roughly 1 inch thick made of diopside glass, enriched with silicon, and the third layer, a mere few millimeters thick, is made of a calcium porcelain mixture. Who created the Dashka slab? Did they really create it over 120 million years ago? Like many specialists have reluctantly become convinced is the case? It is unquestionably a remarkable object, and one which deserves a lot more attention. Many researchers throughout history have concluded that there was once an advanced race of humans, which were in worldwide communication with one another. Many methods for building, religious figures, and even legends have managed to cross the oceans of Earth over its long life. But the most compelling evidence for this intelligent and extremely advanced ancient civilization is the alignments discovered in regards to ancient sites. With the use of modern technology, we have unraveled just how vast their knowledge must have been. For example, the Great Pyramid is aligned with Machu Picchu, the Nazca Lines, and Easter Island along a straight line around the center of the Earth, with a margin of error of less than one-tenth of one degree. Other sites of ancient construction that are also within one-tenth of one degree of this line include the capital city of ancient Persia, the ancient capital city of the Indus Valley, the once lost city of Petra, the ancient Sumerian city of Ur, and the temples at Angkor Wat, among many others which are just out of alignment. Many ancient ruins demonstrate that the people who constructed them had a special interest in celestial alignments and mathematics. Also that they possessed a spot-on ability of judging geographical accuracies. From north to south, there is no doubt that past civilizations were involved in incredibly complex calculations and architecture. In Giza, for instance, there are many examples of attention to spatial coordinates. The Great Pyramid's faces are aligned with the four cardinal directions almost perfectly. In fact, they are less than 0.2 of a degree off perfect alignment. More and more evidence is also surfacing in regards to the suspected use of power tools. Numerous drill marks have been discovered within ancient sites over the past few years, even including evidence of misstarts from some form of high-powered tool and accidentally split stones apparently from some form of drilling. These discoveries not only confirm a past advanced ancient civilization here on Earth, but insinuates that they were in fact aware of electrical appliance and maybe even an advanced form of travel that we have yet to discover. The floor space of the Great Pyramid of Giza is approximately 3,023 feet, and the height is 481 feet. Its measurements represent the northern hemisphere of the Earth, on a scale of 1 to 43,200. Though controversial, some interpret this number as exactly 20 times the precessional number of 2,160, representing the precession of the Earth through 20 different zodiac constellations. Interestingly, the ancient Mayan culture was also heavily implicated within the Alignment, a civilization who displayed advanced celestial knowledge, including a deep fascination with the ages of the zodiac, with a life calendar ending around the beginning of Aquarius. Another intriguing alignment is the 6,666-kilometer mystery. The distance between various monuments, Kailash to the North Pole, Kailash to Stonehenge, Egyptian pyramids to the North Pole, Stonehenge to Devil's Tower, Stonehenge to Bermuda Triangle, Bermuda Triangle to Easter Island, and Easter Island to Tazumal are all at a precisely 6,666 kilometer from one another. Just what exactly were these ancient civilizations up to?
the forager population paradox. Along with a number of other paradoxes found in a number of academic fields of research, is now finally rediscovering much regarding our past, vindicating proof of what we have long argued is still hidden. In many areas, buried under meters of earth or virtually impenetrable forests, chapters of lost human history lay waiting to be found, which due to our research into similarities and differentiating factors within unexplained ruins, at least three advanced civilizations once lost, we claim are now finally being rediscovered. Geological research has proven again and again, through the dating of many natural processes, the submergence of land masses, along with studies into erosion rates. Along with carbon radiation dating, many ruins, once claimed as a mere few thousand years old, have inadvertently, regardless of the subsequent conservative attempts at dating these zones, are now shown to have been undeniably far older. Yet the forager population paradox is scientific evidence which demonstrates that human civilizations did indeed once experience a global catastrophe. Known by many names, the Great Flood, the Great Deluge, Rapture, along with many other names in many ancient texts found all around the world. Only a paradox due to it not fitting with a paradigm. Population growth is a science which can accurately track the history and indeed ancestral origins and age of a species. Yet there lay a problem with the study of human population in particular. At some point within a now forgotten history, the human race experienced an event which reset our population growth. It would seem that even the great effort of bending carbon datings, which we allege are dishonest agings of ancient ruins and the civilizations that built them, was still not conservative enough to hide this truth. Once a thriving ancient population seemingly vanished. Data supported, or rather corroborated by the many unfinished and destroyed ancient relics we often discuss on our channel. According to the proceedings of National Academy of Science USA, in a research project titled Periodic Catastrophes Over Human Evolutionary History Are Necessary to Explain the Forager Population Paradox, they state, and I quote, Investigating multiple demographic scenarios in a large sample of human and chimpanzee populations, we find that periodic catastrophes, combined with plausible fertility or mortality reductions, can reasonably generate zero population growth. Our findings bolster arguments about the role of intergenerational cooperation in supporting the colonizing potential of human populations once released from catastrophes." End quote. Simply put, the only way to explain the population growth or lack of at certain points of our species' history in comparison to its persistently claimed age, the paradox, or the current population, proves that we did indeed experience catastrophe. An event long denied as ever being experienced by our species, with the last acceptably permitted event, K2 having been experienced only by the dinosaurs. We find the data, the paradox, and the methodological truths it exhibits highly compelling. There are many ancient monuments found all over the Earth which possess extraordinarily precise solar and lunar alignments. Ingenious designs, often many thousands of years old, constructed from stones, sometimes quarried, cut, and transported to the sites from many miles away. This movement of megaliths was accomplished using techniques or technology as yet not understood, and to date, many of these megalithic stone placements are perceived as near-impossible feats of ancient engineering. And although many impressive examples of monuments which track the sun can be found to have originated from many different civilizations, the most notable of antiquity, most famous for a seemingly obsessive level of monuments devoted to the observing of the sun's path, was undoubtedly the Neolithics. One has to wonder, why was there such a fixation? Was the motivation for this mass of undertakings of a tragic nature? Was it out of fear, fear created by a memory of a catastrophic event, 
possibly involving the sun's powerful emittance of radiation. Maybe they experienced the consequences of an ancient warming cycle. We may never know. Yet the most important question in our field is not why these volumes of solar-aligned relics were created, but how. How did our ancient ancestors, claimed as having existed over 10,000 years ago, construct such precisely positioned granges, hinges, barrows, and sun daggers? Something we have previously covered, an incredible type of sundial which tracked a sunspot across the wall of an ancient cave with each month, solstice and new year precisely marked out across the walls. Yet the sundials in question in this video are a group of far more familiarly designed dials left by the Neolithics. These sun-tracking dials can be found across the Neolithic sites of Ireland, Scotland, Orkney, and England. First discovered by an American by the name of Martin Brennan, a 39-year-old from New York. Not only did he discover the true function of curbstones located in Noth, codename K7, K15, among others. He also cracked the earliest form of writing while studying the Irish Stone Age artwork. Earlier this year, a theory emerged on the internet by writer and journalist Ben Gagnon. He suggested that there was an image of a swan on curbstone 15 at Nonth. He claimed that while examining a photo he had taken of K15, he flipped it upside down and saw something no one had ever seen before – the faint but unmistakable image of a swan in profile. The true meaning or purpose of the curbstones had for a long time been heavily debated within certain circles. The intriguing cup and ring marks had been known of for some time. Yet as previously mentioned, though the most popular theory of the design on K15 was the claim that it was the depiction of a swan glyph, this hypothesis was rejected even before Martin's unarguably accurate translation was discovered. Martin identified the sundial while examining a passage mount in the Boyne Valley. And although sundials thousands of years old have been excavated throughout Europe, many specialist individuals reviewing Martin's finds believe that the sundial discovered in County Meath is the oldest and possibly most important ever found. According to Martin, who has been studying megalithic Irish art for the last 10 years, Ireland's megalithic tombs are suffering from appalling neglect. Some of the most important passage mounds excavated previously have been ignored or, conveniently, completely sealed up. Martin's discoveries are undoubtedly remarkable and are of tremendous value to our ongoing deciphering of ancient antiquity and its past civilizations. It is a journey of discovery we find highly compelling. Rising nearly 400 feet above the desert floor in a remote section of New Mexico within ancient Anasazi territory is a place named Chaco Canyon, and within stands an imposing natural structure called Fajada Butte. Hidden from the world for over 700 years, along a precarious narrow ledge, there lay a secret, ancient, astronomical observatory. Subsequently given the name Sun Dagger, and the reason why is nothing less than remarkable. It has been revealed that for more than a thousand years, the Sun Dagger has been revealing to all aware of its creation the subtle changing of the seasons. In 1977, it was thankfully rediscovered when rock art and petroglyphs were spotted nearby. Anna Sofer, who was cataloging the rock art, was one morning greeted by the sun dagger, slowly traveling across the wall, traversing the strange spiral patterns which were etched upon them. The intelligent Anna realized that the sun dagger could have been connected to the petroglyphs, so along with her colleagues, she came back at various dates throughout the year eventually establishing the following information. On the summer solstice, the sun dagger appears near the top of the largest spiral, and over a period of 18 minutes it slices through the very center, cutting the spiral in half before leaving it in shadow for another year. On the winter solstice, two daggers of light appear, lasting for 49 minutes, during which they frame the large spiral. Finally, an equally fascinating and more complex light show occurs on the spring and autumn equinoxes. The large spiral is carved in such a way that counting from the center outward to the right, there are nine grooves. On each equinox, a dagger of light appears that cuts through the spiral on different angles. Meanwhile, a second dagger slices through the center of the smaller spiral. 
These light shows, which had been going on for centuries, continued for several years after their rediscovery. However, in 1989, it was found that the granite slabs had shifted. The alignments that had been arranged so carefully were no more. It also seems impossible for us modern people to realign them as all attempts have failed. Was this sun dagger really made by the Anasazi Indians? Or was it a far older surviving relic, one that they were merely aware of? A relic which has unfortunately eroded away? Similar ancient light displays marking the solstices and equinoxes can be found at other locations as well, such as in the southwestern United States and Mexico. In a ruin in Hovenweep National Monument, near the borders of Utah and Colorado, light beams also illuminate spiral petroglyphs on the summer solstice. At Burrow Flats in Southern California, a winter solstice sun points a finger of light to the center of five concentric rings in an early Chumash rock art display. Were these monuments once used by a lost, ancient advanced group of marauders as calendar sites while traveling America? Perhaps one day we will know for sure. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care.